Today, on Be Something Wonderful, announce and shift to your new reality right now. Go quantum. I am your host, Tom Karen, and this is the Be Something Wonderful studio of higher consciousness, where we help you level up and become the best version of yourself. Creators, good morning and welcome back to the studios of Be Something Wonderful here in Las Vegas. Big video for you today. I want to talk about an email that I received from a subscriber yesterday who said that he aced a test. Now, I want to talk about this because this is a beautiful masterclass in recognizing that all possibilities, all realities, all identities already exist within you and that that where you choose to live, where you choose to occupy, the reality you choose to announce shifts you immediately to it. This is beautiful. And so here's his old story, a college student. There's a math class that's notoriously difficult. This is what he was describing in his email. He filled it a few semesters ago. Retaking it needed a 60 to pass. So he, he, he retook the exam, took it on Friday. Now, I received this email yesterday, so this was a few days ago. He took the exam on Friday. It was harder than I expected. Hear what he's saying here. He said he counted up the questions, and I was sure in thought I was only going to get a 40 and fill the class again. Again, talking about the old story. That old story's there, right? Wanting the new story of a 60, of a passing grade, but talking about the old story. He goes, but then, despite the past conditions and present appearances, even though the test felt awful, he got up, picked up his mat, and walked. I'm going to talk about that's a reference to that that show, that Netflix show, The Chosen. Jesus healing the paralyzed man at the pool of Bethesda, saying, do you want to be healed? That's the question. Then pick up your, then get up, pick up your mat and, and walk. So this is, so we had all of this going on, right? Already filled the class. Notoriously difficult. Telling the story of that it's notoriously difficult. And then it was harder than I expected as he, after he took the exam. He even counted up the questions as he was walking out. I was sure and thought I was only going to get a 40 and fill the class again. Now we're going to talk about what he got and how he created that. He goes, but then as he was walking out, the, despite the past conditions and the present appearances, and even though, it, the, even though the test felt awful, he even said that the test felt awful. And of course, you're only ever feeling what you're thinking. That feeling of feeling awful came from the thought that, oh, I'm only going to get a 40. I counted it up, but I'm only going to get a 40. But then, as I'm going to show you today, he got up, picked up his mat, and walked. And we're going to show you how he did that. So let's start here, because there was even a comment from one of you that was still, uh, I think there was a comment on the I am, the Neville Goddard teachings of I, I will climb a ladder. Neville Goddard teaches you to imagine in a state akin to sleep, to create that imaginal scene that you climb this imaginary, in your imagination, this ladder. And then... He also offers the idea that after that imaginal scene and as you go about your day to affirm, I will not climb the ladder. And we talked about the power in that affirmation, right? The power of I will not, right? We talked about, I talked about that in comments and I talked about that in yesterday's video. It even relates to today's video. But I think some of you were commenting about uh, a specific person or something you were manifesting and, and, one of you commented, well, it didn't work. But remember, it, it's not a question about it didn't work. You are the work. The work's done through you. So when you say it didn't work, it means you didn't work. You're, you're declaring that you're, you, somehow there's a reality outside of you. There are processes outside of you that work or don't work. We're going to talk about these ideas today and more. Remember, every desire, every thought and feeling to experience something different than it appears to be is already a reality within you. To experience something different than what you believe you're currently experiencing in, that, in your 
3D experience, your physical experience. Every desire, every thought and feeling to experience something different than it appears to be is already a reality within you. It's that divine urge, as I've talked about, to be, have, and experience something different is your higher self, your inner being, as Abraham Hicks and other spiritual teachers call it, your I am awareness urging you to look at me, look at me. Another quote from the chosen, the scene at the healing of the paralyzed man at the pool of Bethesda. Because when Jesus approaches that paralyzed man, says, I have a question for you. Do you want to be healed? The man just goes, starts launching into his old story. The story of the unwanted reality, the story of the appearances, right? Wanting to be healed, wanting to experience something different, right? But telling the story of, of that old story, of that old reality. Remember, all realities exist within you. But then Jesus, as that I am awareness, says to him, look at me, look at me, because the man was drifting off, looking back at the pool, telling him the story about how people are walking over him, that he can't get to the pool, that the conditions are not right. Like Jesus, I am in the powerful scene at the pool of Bethesda, asking you, urging you, your higher self, what do you want? That's your higher self. That's like the Jesus is your higher self, that I am awareness, the Christ in you, that identity, your true identity, asking you, telling you, Look at me, look at me, urging you. That's what desire is, it's an urge. What do you want? That's what the desire is asking you. Then announce it, because it's clear if you desire or want something, you know what you want. Jesus knew what he wanted, but that's, the, that's what a desire is. Jesus is representing the, your higher self talking to you, urging you to announce your reality, urging you to claim it, right? Urging you to claim that divine urge or that divine desire as I am awareness. What do you want? Then claim it. Accept it. Take a stand and walk and walk in that new identity and reality. I'm going to show you. This is what this college student did. <laughs> and I'll show you. Even with all the stories that existed within him, the old stories, and even with all the appearances seeming un seem showing him something contrary to what he desired, he still got up, picked up his mat, and walked right, walked in that new reality. So I, I, this is how I want to start this today. Instead of answering that divine urge, remember that divine urge is your higher self talking to you. Look at me, look at me, what do you want? Then claim it, accept it. We, your higher self knows what you want, but he's saying, if that's what you want, he's asking you, well, what do you want? Well, then get up, pick up your mat and walk. Do you want to be healed? Do you want to be whole? Do you want to see yourself as fulfillment? That's what it means to be healed. It means to see yourself whole, fulfilled with everything you want that you desire, right? The, the fulfillment of that divine urge, the fulfillment of that, design, uh, that, divine, that divine desire is always being fulfilled in every moment, right? It's about announcing, claiming, and occupying your imagined and desired reality, right? But instead of that, you tell the old, tired, worn-out story of it doesn't work. It didn't work. It never worked. It will never work. One of you was actually on the channel. I get it. You're telling that story. It didn't work, right? Remember, when you say that, you're creating that. that compl that's complaining about reality, complaining that oh, it didn't work. The, the re reality creation doesn't work. The processes don't work. My life's not changing. Well, you're creating that entire life experience. Remember, you're not your old story. You're all stories. You're all realities. You're all identities. You're greater than all of them, right? So your higher self to you, this is Jesus at the pool of Bethesda again, when the paralyzed man launched into the old stories. The old, remember, when you see the scene, the paralyzed man, man looks old and tired and worn out, right? Just lying there. No, th declaring it doesn't work. It didn't work. It never works for me. It will never work. Reality is not what I want. But your high, then Jesus, as your I am awareness, says to him, remember this is from the chosen, the scene of the pool of Bethesda, that's not what I asked you. I'm not asking you about your old story. I'm not asking about who's helping you and not helping you. This is what uh, Jesus says, your I am awareness. It does nothing for you. It means nothing. Your old story does nothing for you. It means nothing. 
You exist in all stories. You get to tell your story, right? But I get it, those subjective tendencies to tell, to assume, to believe in the same old story and to live and create and imagine and assume the same identity and reality in life and life experience, it seems so powerful, right? It does. It seems so powerful, right? Those tendencies that to look at reality the same way, to believe that nothing's changing, to declare that it didn't work, it doesn't work, it will never work, right? It has never worked. Those tendencies feel powerful. But remember, and, and that's why um, when Jesus asked him, uh, uh, Jesus is talking to the paralyzed man, he says, he, he, says, he says, it means nothing. It does nothing for you. And then Jesus says to him, and you know that, but why? Why do you keep, why do you stay here? Why are you still here? And the paralyzed man says, I don't know why. I, I don't know why I even continue to tell those old stories. That's us. That's because of those subjective tendencies. We don't know why our life hasn't changed. We don't know why we keep looking at reality the same way. Just like that paralyzed man answers to Jesus, I don't know. We don't know sometimes when we feel those subjective tendencies are so strong. But remember, they have no power, right? You, you can, you just can, you, but you continue to tell it, remember it, and make it real and give it reality. That's what, it's you continuing to tell the story, continuing to believing in it, to continue, continuing to believe in it, continuing to tell that story, continuing to assume it. Right? You're the one that gives it reality. That's why Neville Goddard said, do not resist evil, right? right? And when he was quoting the Bible, right? He goes, because when you resist unwanted realities, when you resist those old stories, when you resist any story, you give it reality. You make it real, right? So this is powerful. I don't know why, but you continue to tell those old stories. But this is the truth that sets you free. And we're going to talk about this um, college student. We're going to get to his story, the rest of his story on how he aced this exam, an exam and a class that he has failed before, right? And, and that he said is notoriously hard. You could have no power at all against me unless it had been given to you from above. That's what sets you free. It doesn't matter what those subjective tendencies are. It doesn't matter how long in linear time you believe you've been in that story. You're totally new to, in, in your entirety. Everything, new identity, new reality, new past, present, and future right now based on the story you, you choose, based on the story you get to tell because you exist in all realities. So it doesn't matter. There's no power unless it's given from above, unless you give that story power and keep telling it from that I am awareness, from that perspective. Unless I keep telling, assuming, and believing in that same old story and identity or reality, that's the truth that, that sets you free. You could have no power at all against me, Jesus saying to Pontius Pilate, to those conditions, to those old stories. You could have no po power at all against me unless it had been given to you from above, unless I keep telling, assuming, believing in that same old story and identity and reality. You believe the answer to being whole, complete, healed, and fulfilled is in getting the conditions, the processes, and techniques, getting them just right. Do you see it? You're focused out there on the conditions, on getting to, like the paralyzed man, trying to get to the pool where the water and the conditions were stirring up and they were just right, and then he'll be healed, right? You're trying to fix the old story. You retell it in hopes that you can fix it right? That old story, that old identity. Instead of just directly answering that divine urge and desire, remember that any divine urge, any desire, any wanting is your higher self speaking to you, saying, yes, here I am, right? Like Moses answering, uh, answering God in, 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 when he was at the burning bush. Here I am, right? Answer that divine urge with, with imagining and assuming that everything you, that you are that per, already that person you desire to be. Do you want to be healed? Do you want to be complete? Do you want to be whole? Do you want to be fulfilled? Answer it directly versus looking around. That's why Jesus said, look at me. The, the paralyzed man is looking around, telling the story again. And Jesus says to him, I'm asking about you, not the old stories. 
not the old conditions, not the past and the people, events, and circumstances out there. I'm asking about you, your new story. Who are you, right? We've talked about this in many different ways. Stop complaining that it doesn't work. The law of assumption, the processes, the affirmations, my life, the conditions. We just complain that it doesn't work. It's not working. You believe you're declaring a truth. You believe that, that oh no, I'm not complaining. I'm just saying what it, what is. No, you're creating it. You're creating what is. You're creating your entire life experience with that. You're declaring I'm broken. Reality's broken. You are the only and one and only creator of reality that you're complaining about. It's law. So you're creating that. There's nothing broken. There's nothing to fix. There's nothing to go back and try to, try to get right. Everything's created right now. Make all your desiring and wanting an announcement of reality, of your identity and things that you want to experience. Make all your desiring and wanting an announcement because that's your higher self. That desiring and wanting is that divine urge of all that is to know itself experientially as all that is. It's your higher self, your inner being, communicating with you and saying, okay, what do you want? Then claim it, announce it, go to it. That's what that is. So let's go, get up, pick up your mat and walk. That's what Jesus said to the paralyzed men. Okay, that's what you want, then get up, walk. Pick it up, pick things up and walk. And, and this is what this college uh, student said. Remember the story, right? It, it, notoriously difficult, already failed. Thought, added up the questions that he believed he was certain that he got right. And he believed that it was only f good for a 40% grade, a, a failing grade. He go, but then he said, despite all that, despite even the exam, as he admitted, feeling awful because of the thought that he only got a 40, because of the thought that it's notoriously hard. So you're only ever feeling what you're thinking, despite all of those changing thoughts and feelings that are not reality. Remember, you are reality. He said, but as I walked out of the lecture hall, in other words, as I got up, picked up my, my things and walked, I thought, if I feel, it's only because I said I would feel. No one else is determining that but me. Wow. Wow, I want to pause here. This is powerful. This college student is providing a master class in, in manifesting anything. But as I walked out of the lecture hall, as I, I got up and I picked up my things and I walked, just like Jesus said to the paralyzed man, get up, pick up your mat and walk. I thought, if I feel, it's only because I said I would feel. In other words, I'm source. I get to decide this. No one else is determining that but me. Wow. Here he's recognizing all possibilities and realities are within him. And even the idea of feeling is within him. All of those ideas, but they're all determined by him as source. This is so powerful. We're going to come back to this. So. Even though the test felt awful, I started seeing my grade as a 60. So he said, remember, he's thinking 40. So it didn't matter. Even though he had thoughts of 40%, even though he felt awful about that thought of 40%, I started seeing my grade as 60. I got up, picked up my mat and walked. I started imagining in my mind's eye or assuming within, that my grade 60, the thought that the thought that it was harder and going to get a foot and, and even though he had the thought that it was harder and that he was going to get a 40 and feel again, that's the middle. That's those, that's the messy middle of thoughts and feelings. They don't matter. It didn't matter. Even with that thought and feeling, it didn't matter. Right. And he, and he says here, thought about seeing it as a 90 for a split second. So then he had another thought. Maybe I'll, uh, I want a 90. The, again, what is desire? What is wanting? That's your higher self communicating with you. 90's there. Just as, just as 60, just as 40, all possibilities exist. And hear this. This is powerful. This is getting back to the video where we, set, where we introduce the affirmation, I will not climb the ladder. Even as you imagined it already that you're climbing the ladder. Remember, that's what Neville 
talks about in a state akin to sleep. You imagine that. And then as you go about your day, you're affirming, I will not climb the ladder. Well, think of this. He imagined it, started seeing as great as 60. Then he thought about seeing it as a 90 for a split second. Then he had another thought. Then he goes, then I thought, there's no way I could get a 90. I'll stick with a 60. Wow, I get tingles. I, I will not climb the ladder. There's no way. A 90's no way. And remember, when you're saying, I will not climb the ladder, what is that greater consciousness, that great subconscious, that great creative power within you focused on? The ladder, climbing the ladder, it doesn't know notness. It doesn't pay attention to what you don't want. It pays attention to what you're focused on. And so when he said, there's no way I could get a 90, that greater consciousness within you, that greater creative power has not, is 90. That's your desire. It's a 90, but I'll stick with 60. In, in doing this, he released all resistance to 60, 90, or any grade. Now he is accepting all possibilities. He's seeing himself as source, right? Not as irrelevant. You, he, you release all resistance and doubt in that moment he released it. In that very moment he released all of it. This is powerful. That was the moment, and he says it right here, when he had this thought, there's no way I could get a 90. That was a, that was a moment of separation and doubt, but I saw it as 60. So he's even acknowledging that, oh yeah, that 90, that's a, that's, it, it, there's no way I'll get a 90. He acknowledges that as, a, as doubt, but it's not, remember, it is doubt, but it's the releasing of that doubt. You see, he released that doubt and fear, right? That was a moment of releasing the doubt and fear in, in the fear of non-fulfillment and accepting the possible outcome of a feeling grade, but accepting all possible outcomes. Whether it's 60, 90, or 40, he accepted all of them as within him. But the desire was, the true desire was 90. That's what he wanted, right? Okay, I'll get a 60, but released it all. I will not climb the ladder. That's the brilliance in that. Review those videos again so you can really get this idea, right? This is powerful. And here's what he said. My score is exactly 90. Exactly 90. Wow. Not only that, this is his words, but the class average for this exam is 64. 64. He, be he blew this exam away. Right? And I'm not good at this kind of math either. He even admits that that reality, that assumption within him exists. I, in other words, I will not climb the ladder. He, yeah, I'm not good at this anyway, but still I get a 90. This is powerful. I'm not good at this kind of math. On, and, and on every other test, I pretty much scored less than the class average. His old story, but just one story within all that he is. Do you see it? He knows now that he's not any of those stories. So he can tell that story. He could, he could say that because he knows all those stories exist within him. He knows he can, he can dominate reality. He can rise above any, any one story. And he did. Wow, that's powerful. I remember, I, I, I am not my story. I am all stories. Before Abraham, I am. Before Abraham was, I am. Before Abraham, before all those stories, whether it's 60 or 40 or, or 90, I'm all realities. I am. I'm not any one story. I'm all stories. I'm greater than all those stories. I'm greater than all possibilities. I am who and what I say I am. And remember what else he said this when he was walking out. No one, no one else is determining that but me. Wow. I, I like his wording here. Look at this. No one else is determining that. In other words, any outcome, anything in my reality, anything that I, I exist in all realities, but no one's telling me where I'm going to live, what I'm going to choose. No one's determining any outcomes but me. Wow. I am that I am. No one is determining that but me. Master class, guys, this is it. Then if this doesn't shift you, wow, I don't know what can. Announce and shift to your new reality right now. Go quantum. I am your host, Tom Karen, and this is the Be Something Wonderful Studio of Higher Consciousness, 
where we help you level up and become the best version of yourself. Creators, thank you. Thank you for being with me. Thank you for liking and sharing and commenting on the videos. Thank you for being part of our Facebook group, the ambassadors at facebook.com slash groups slash be something wonderful for joining us on Instagram and Twitter at Tom Karen, TikTok at be something wonderful and for being part of our membership channel. Don't forget a week from yesterday, <laughs> week, next Sunday, we have our fourth live stream on the membership channel. We'll be addressing questions and topics that you've been sending to us at info at be something wonderful.com. This will be our 13th live stream on the channel. So be sure to join us. If you're a member, tune in. And if you can't make it and you're a member, it's going to be on the membership channel available for after to view anytime. And if you're not a member of the channel, just check it out. There's a link below. Creators with great love, with great light and infinite gratitude. This is Tom Kieran here in the studios. It'd be something wonderful. Until next time, we'll see you soon.